Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Obviously a very disappointing for the disappointing season for the Dallas Cowboys. Honestly, as a Bills fan, like we ripped a Buffalo Bills mock draft last night. There's no better way to get over a playoff loss than just taking a look at the 2023 NFL draft and just taking a look at the offseason, how we can get better. We got Rock off here joining us. And again, knows all the college prospects, but also a massive, massive Cowboys fan. He has not spoken to me since they lost. So this is the first time we are talking. But again, before we get into it, I just want to say thank you to you guys. Uh, the support you guys have shown, whether it's college football recruiting, whether it's the NFL draft, truly does mean a lot. We love talking ball with you guys in the comment section. So let us know what you guys feel about the picks, where Dallas should be going with this pick. Rock, I'm going to kick it off to you as the Dallas Cowboys expert here. Like, how are we improving this roster heading into next season here? The first thing, um, first things first, I mean, we all expected this, right? I mean, the Cowboys disappointing playoff um, matchups continue. Right. Um, it's why I start watching prospects early in December. <laughs> and yeah, we're here again. It's just like deja vu all over again. But anyway, I think that the first thing that we really need to do is, is get some speed at the wide receiver position. And really, overall, on the team, I feel like that's something that's been lacking. It was obvious during the, the 49ers game. Um, second, probably interior defensive line. Um, that might be, honestly, even a bigger need than wide receiver. Maybe some depth at corner and a linebacker. That's kind of what I'd like to see, whether it's through the draft or whether it's through free agency this year. Yeah, and a lot of this is, like, hard to do. We'll fire this up and just talk different props. Did I just see Miles Murphy go number one overall, by the way? I was doing I was doing some of these mock drafts earlier today, and some of the names are flying off the board. Early. That threw me for a, a tailspin there. That's unfortunate because I thought Jordan Addison could have been a nice little pickup for the Dallas Cowboys at 26. Um, 26, we can take a look. I mean, I love Rock. You know I love, like, some of these cornerbacks late in the first round. A guy like Joey Porter Jr. makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Position wise, Project Jones actually jumps out to me. We can take a look at the wider series here first. Eh, thoughts on Josh Downs this early? Uh, not someone I want to spend a first round pick on. Great. I think, in terms Great. of fit, he's someone that gets open a lot, gets a lot of separation. Um, so I like that, but I think there's better players on the board, especially with Joey Porter. Um, I do also like the idea of sliding uh, Tyler Smith inside and yes. putting Broderick Jones yes. in the left tackle position. I think that just makes your strength an even bigger strength. So I don't be all for that. I would love if Roger Jones is at 26, like that's like a, a semi team need, but also like that's the best player available right now. Maybe oh, outside of Joey Porter Jr. Uh, Roger Jones is the best player available and he's a position of need and just gives you a ton more talent on that offensive line. And again, what the future holds with some of those offensive linemen, a little bit in question, Roger Jones would be a great get. He's my offensive tackle too. Makes a lot of sense. This is where you might take a look at wide receiver rock. If tank Dell is on the board here, <laughs> well, this is why, like going back to that pick, obviously I didn't say guard or tackle um, as a big team need, but I mean, it's why you can't really pick for need. You, you got to pick the best player available yes. and, and make a strength an even bigger strength. Agreed. And especially with a guy like Project Jones, who I really think could go top 10. I think he's yeah. that good. All right. Pick 58. Where What positions do you want to take a look at here? Maybe. I like Garrett Williams from Syracuse. I think that'd be a good fit. Um I'd like to see which wide receivers are. I mean, this is a tough spot for wide receiver. I, I agree. So that's Dallas is in a very interesting situation because I don't know if like a Jordan Addison is going to be falling or, or Zay Flowers is going to be falling to 26. Those are probably the guys I'd be targeting in the first round. But then I'm with you after some of those guys, like I'm not in love with a ton of these guys in, in, in that day two round. Uh, I, I think a guy good. like he obviously didn't fall to us, but Jalen Hyatt in the second round is kind of exactly yeah. what I'm looking for. Yeah. I could even see his team kind of reaching for a player like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, one pick ahead of the Giants, that's tough. But um, you look at Rasheed Wrights, I think a lot of people are higher on him than I am. Same. I'm also a big Maryland fan. He killed us, but going yes. back and watching the tape, I think the issue is like he's just kind of raw as a route runner. I don't see a full route tree. I think that system also protects a lot of wide receivers and makes a lot of receivers look really, really good. Um, so that doesn't really interest me too much. Um, also with Rasheed Rice, like we'll, we'll talk about him when we get to our wide receiver position ranks, but like, how, what do you think his athleticism is? Like, do you think he's like a top notch athlete? I never got that vibe when I was watching his film. I don't know more like David Bell vibes. Like he's not going to be a burner. He's pretty damn good wide receiver, but I don't know if he's special. No, I, you're right on with that. I think I had that right in my notes too. So, um, maybe look at linebackers or anybody. 
Yes, I do think this is a good round for linebackers. I love Dayon Henley from Washington State. Noah Sewell would be an interesting one. DeMarvin Overshone, kind of more of the undersized guy. I know you do like Dorian Williams as well. Right. Um, yeah, I'm just looking for more of a, a guy that can fill fill some gaps. I think Henley, he, I, I tweeted this out, that he kind of reminds me a lot of Brian Asamoah, who got drafted by the Vikings last year. Um, someone who kind of goes sideline to sideline, has good speed, but it's not going to really fill a, a running hole um, with too much physicality. Oh, man, this is tough right now. Jalen High against Snipe that didn't do us any favors. I hate Ojomo. I mean, I love him. I love him. I, I think we're both Ojomo fans. I mean, he can do it all. I think he can be a three down player. Yes. Um, someone who can stay in Texas and and be whoever the Cowboys want him to be. So I think that would be a great pick pickup. Um, especially right now with the board looking like what it is. I don't really love anybody else. Yeah, this isn't this. I this wouldn't be an ideal situation because you would obviously like Jalen Hyatt or maybe a Zay Flowers. Both those guys get get sniped early. Moro Jomo is a guy, and you said it best. Like, if you're looking for an interior defense lineman, like you have the guys like Siaki Ika, uh, Mozzie Smith, Keandre Coburn, like those guys are three down players. Like, they don't provide any value in the pass rush. Moro Jomo is, yeah, he's a little bit undersized for playing inside, but he's an animal taking on double teams, but he also provides a lot of value in the pass rush. And so he's a guy that's going to be able to do it all. And when you look at Big Q Bohana, like, I feel like you're all right with some of those big interior defense linemen. More Jomo gives you a little bit more juice from that inside, I think. Absolutely. Um, right. At this point, I mean, wide receivers kind of gotten picked off. Yeah. Um, it's going to be some of the smaller. I mean, A.T. Perry, again, I don't – well, I mean, it's your guy. It's Wake Forest. What do you think? I, I do. I think A.T. Perry is, a, of course, Wake Forest is absolutely being slept on. You guys, I believe, got Ja'Cory Roberson as an undrafted free agent last yeah. year. Jaquan Roberson, just there wasn't much special about him. A.T. Perry is a guy, 30 touchdowns in his last two seasons. He's 6'5". He has an elite frame. There's not many, like, yes, he's not a burner, but he is elite at going up and, and making plays. He made those Clemson DBs look like little kids out there when they play Clemson. I like his ability. Trey Palmer is another guy that, I mean, in terms of like a vertical threat stretching the field, also a guy that can get it done. I'm a big fan of A.T. Perry. I, I think might be a little rich at pick 90, but I do like A.T. Perry. Let's take a look at another position in need that you want to take a look at. If we don't find anyone, I would I would bang the table for A.T. Perry. Yeah. Um, corner or linebacker right now would be where I'm looking at. Oh, Jalen Jones. Jalen Jones. Wow. wow. Or, and Clark Phillips. I yeah. mean, both of them. Um, I mean, more Clark Phillips. I think he fits what we're looking for right now, especially going down a Jordan Lewis and an Anthony Brown, two kind of smaller slot slash nickel kind of corners. You can kick Bland out to the outside full time, and Phillips is a dog. I mean, he's one of those guys that we always talk about. So I would love that pick. I'll, I'll hammer that, and At Perry goes out the window. Like Clark Phillips is a guy that he's gonna fall because he's smaller and he's probably only a nickel dude in the NFL. He's one of the best corners in the draft, like in terms of film. Like, yeah. and there's a really like a ton of good cornerbacks in this class. He's just getting pushed on boards because he's not like the longer boundary type dude, but he's so good. I mean, yeah, he's so good. Have you watched Antonio Maffi? He was a defensive tackle for a year, and then he switched to guard. He's uh, sure. right here on the board. Oh, no, I have not. I did hear about him, though. Interesting like pick. Uh, yeah, no, I love him. I think that he has some – I think the, the scheme at UCLA did him no favors. I mean, he's not a zone run kind of uh, blocker, but uh, next level he's definitely going to be um, a threat. You want to take him? No, no, just – I mean – it's an interesting guy. Um, I definitely look for a linebacker again. Um, well, no, I, no, nah. boy, yeah, I can't. I, I watched his film and I was just not blown away. He was disappointing this year. Owen Popo, I, I like Henry. T oh, here's another one of your guys. Yeah, Ivan Pace is a dog. Um, Let's talk about him. Like, I he is a dog, and he reminds me a lot of Nicobe Dean, where you watch the film and saw, he plays with his hair on fire. He recognizes plays extremely quick and gets the ball carry. He's going to get pushed on boards, too, because he, he's just like Nicobe Dean. Like, he's just like short and stubby. Like, he, there's yeah, not no, much, he, uh, physical attributes to him. Yeah, he's he's six foot two thirty, so definitely short and stocky. Um, he played at Miami of Ohio for three years and he transferred into yeah. uh Cincinnati after this year. But I mean he was a wrecking ball in the middle of the field. Wrecking ball. He's I mean, he's fast, he's physical for his size. I mean, he he sees the field well. Uh I love him as a player. I have him as my I think it's I think it's linebacker three or four. Wow, that's yeah, I'm really I have him over Trenton Simpson. 
Um, so for me, I actually have Henry. Okay, can you say can you say his name? Henry Toto. I got you. Toto, yeah, I have Toto above him, but Ivan Pace is just right there behind him. So I'd be okay with either one of these guys. Um, the way Dallas drafts, I'd expect it to be the Alabama prospect over the Cincinnati prospect. They're yeah. not a big small school kind of team. So I, I mean, both are great picks. Yeah, Ivan. He's he is an interesting one. I just. He also can blitz really well for like being a guy who's like only sick. He just plays with his hair on fire. And again, like Nicobe Dean, just diagnoses plays so quickly, but tr- struggles to kind of work through blocks and that physicality just because of his size. I'll go Henry Toa Toa. And Henry Toa Toa is a guy that I think he's just going to be a very quality linebacker at the next level. Like took on a lot of responsibility transferring in from Tennessee to Alabama and is like a, a field general out there. And yeah, yeah the machine. Yeah, and I, I love that. Oh, kind of galp too. I like that. I like that. One sixty three. Where we? Where would you be looking here? I, based off of the, I mean, Charlie Jones, another guy. Um, based off of the playoff performance of a kicker, I'm starting to lean that way. I know it's early. There's not really a guy. Maybe um, kid from Michigan. I mean, that's later on in the draft, but. Um, yeah, I honestly like Charlie Jones in the slot as well. Someone who can get open for Dak Prescott. I think again, you can never have too many weapons. Um, yeah, Jake Moody. At some haven't point. gotten haven't gotten to my kicker film yet, Rock. <laughs> Listen, you gotta be on your shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think uh if you watch Justin Shorter, you like him? Love him. Lo- okay. Like okay, I don't love the film, but I love the 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 ceiling. And honestly, when you're at round five, like I'm okay taking a flyer on a former five star who's six four, runs a very good forty. It's had problems dropping the football, but man, is he physically gifted? And he's a guy that I know a lot of people are really high on because of those traits. And I know a lot of people just don't really like him because he's had plenty of time to figure it out and he hasn't figured it out yet. Yeah. I mean, someone who can stretch the field is, is perfect for what we have um, already. I mean, someone in the slot that can take over for CD, allow him to go outside. Um, shorter would be a great pick. I he He's, He's a lotto ticket, but I, I think it's okay on round five taking a lotto ticket kind of guy because I yeah. think he could be special at the next level. This is an interesting one. Charlie Jones, is, I I mean, he's just going to be solid. Yeah. Would you consider um, running back here with Tony Pollard? I was just about to say Mankatosh. Um, I think with Tony Pollard, her, and Zeke probably taking a pay cut slash lesser role slash yeah. might get cut overall. I think someone that can be kind of a three down back and even a goal line back like Kenny um, is a perfect fit. Kenny McIntosh is phenomenal out of the backfield. I mean, I think he almost had 600 receiving yards and he, I mean, there's there, this running back class. I really like, I like it more in the day three or day two range. Like the, like the guys like Zach Evans, Sean Tucker, but Kenny McIntosh a, a, in terms of a day three running back prospect, like it's really rare to find a running back as comfortable out of the backfield than Kenny McIntosh is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, dude, we are hitting all. I, I forget how many picks the Cowboys have. It's like almost too much. We got four more. We got four <laughs> more here. Um, see who's available. Like all, I just want to just just take a through. look at the big board here. Yeah, Kirkland, Drake Nugent. Um, he's actually not. He's going. He's transferred to Michigan. Oh, um, oh Dylan Horton. Can I sell you on Dylan Horton? And I know we already went defensive line, but man, is this guy just? He has a motor. And yep. like motor gets you somewhere at, at the NFL level transfers from, I believe, New Mexico. He had four sacks against Michigan. And this is a guy that he can play three tech. He can play the edge. He was very productive. And I get why he's a, a round five, round six kind of guy, because there's like athletically probably a little bit capped in terms of evaluating them as, as prospects. Mm-hmm. But man, was he so good at TCU and he just has a motor. He's like, a, he's a locker room guy. He's somebody you want in that locker room. Hey, I haven't watched him yet, but I'm going to take your word for that one. He, I, and I think he has more juice than people give him credit for. Like everyone's kind of like pushing him down boards. His film was good. I, I get it. He's probably not as athletically gifted as like the Will Andersons, and that's why you're getting him in round five. But I really liked his game. Austin Stogner returning to school. There's, there could be some sneaky guys. Still some guys. I, I'd even. So we're probably going to be without uh, Dalton Schultz this year. It's having someone behind a Hendershot and a Ferguson. Um, just as backup, I think at this point won't help or won't hurt. Um, I mean, Latu's okay. I like Latu too. He's probably the guy I would go with. I do like Braden Willis, but in terms of what Dallas wants to do with their tight ends, I don't know about it. Cameron Latu's probably with Austin Stogner returning. They got to update their stuff. Um, 
Zach Coons is like six eight. Like he's like a red zone kind of Cameron Latu is probably the most solid. That's what Dallas looks for. Just give me yeah. a solid tight end. You know what I mean? And that, mm-hmm. I think that's Cameron Latu. I mean, if there's that. I mean, I'm trying to think of any other position of need at this point, we're just kind of picking for luxury. Yeah, and you're just picking guys who I mean, Cameron Latu is not necessarily a high ceiling kind of guy, but he's gonna come in and make your team. Yeah, let's so, go with him. Why not? It's not gonna him. hurt, right? And then we're taking we're then we're taking a dog with high ceiling. That's what we're doing next. <laughs> Bryce Ford Wheaton. I like him a lot. Demarco Hollins is he's he's a damn good football player too. DJ Dale, I like. Yeah. We already got our backer, right? Did we go with Ivan Pace or Henry Toa Toa? Oh yeah, my god. Right. Carlton Marshall, all just the draft fans in general. This dude, he's played five years of college football, 570 tackles. Oh my 51 tackles for a loss. Like in terms of ultra productivity um carlton marshall has been doing it and he's been doing it at a high level for a while um you think you can play special teams because i mean why not yes um because i mean right now the way the cowboys draft is they always will pick a linebacker towards the sixth seventh round just as a special teams body um and if he makes a team he makes a team so i mean if that's someone that fits that mold it's perfect and i at, at the linebacker position i'll go with them like I want to see guys who just have been productive and know how to find the football. I feel like at that linebacker position, scouts put a little too much emphasis on like the physical traits, like Trenton Simpson's like the linebacker one consensus. Like he does not have a clue what he's doing sometimes mm-hmm. on the football field. And so yeah. like, yeah, it's nice to have all the traits and be a guy that can cover tight ends up the seam and, and do all that stuff in space. But it's like, you got to have a linebacker who knows what he's doing on the field. And, and Carlton Marshall be that kind of guy. Speaking of someone who should know what they're doing on the field, a kicker would be perfect do it. right do now. It. <laughs> do just be, I, really I, I, I don't want to see Brett Maher's face on the Cowboys uniform again. So, I mean, Jake, do you like Jake Moody enough? To, Jake, I don't know yeah, any Money of these other kickers. Rylan's going to know that. Kick the 57-yarder. Um, he's a guy also that, like, I think if – I I'd have never scouted a kicker before. I'm going to be straight up. That being said, if I were to have scouted kickers, like I'd want a kicker who's been forced to make big time field goals in big time moments and is like comfortable with that and has shown he has the ice in his veins. Because inevitably, for the Dallas Cowboys who are going to be competing in the playoffs, he got to be able to make big time kicks. Jake Moody's a guy who has been forced to make big time kicks time and time again because Michigan refuses to blow out teams, and so he's always is like, he's always in pressure situations. Money Moody, he's been very good for two years. I'll I'll, I'll ride with him, and he has the NFL leg. Like you, you see guys like Nick Skiba from last year who 93% make it. Uh, like, it's nice, but he can't kick 50 yards. So it's right. like, he can't take that. Let's see what PFF gives our draft. I'm sure they'll hate they it. They never give us good grades. Never. Because never, never. it's fine. It's fine. We don't, <laughs> we don't need it. B, B, C, C. C. F. Oh, my. I'll tell you what. Any team, oh, they hate Justin Shorter. That's fine. Any team that gets Clark Phillips at pick 90 overall, it, whether it's the Cowboys, whether it's any other team, that's an A-plus for me. I think that dude's a stud. More Jomo is probably the pick. I, I wasn't like – I feel like we reached a little bit for him, but he yeah. also was like – we. It was that was that was a tough – We have to address the position at some point, and I think it just gets worse and worse as the draft goes on. And um, We were able to steal some picks too with Toto. I think that was a steal. Yeah. Um, Mankintosh um, – yeah, Horton. I, these are all great picks. So then it yeah. makes sense with the Cowboys needs. And we'll we'll run. I mean, we'll probably do a Cowboys mock maybe once a week, every two weeks. Like we love doing Cowboys mocks. Rock obviously very passionate about the, the boys. <laughs> like this was a tough one, in my opinion. Yeah. Like you didn't really have a shot at like upgrading at wide receiver because Jordan Addison went right before. And then the next round, Jalen Hyatt gets sniped right before by the Giants, of course, again, back to back wide receivers. Like that was a tough one where like some of the players we liked did not fall to us. But again, that's why you run the simulations. You get prepared for all sorts of scenarios. Again, we appreciate you guys checking us out. Dallas Cowboy fans, honestly, like very, very fun teams. You guys have loved the mocks, and we appreciate that. Let us know in the comment section what you guys think. And, of course, if you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We'll be running these back multiple times up until draft. So we appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to you all later.